anybody in here plays that game. You can find me there, Diablo. Um, and I'm a steak and potatoes and pie type of guy. So I like, uh, I like really hearty meals. So uh, a little bit about Red Hat Identity Management. This is a very simplistic overview, but uh, with Red Hat Identity Management, you get uh, central authentication, which includes uh, an LDAP structure, 389DS, and that will contain all of your user information, UIDs and GIDs, names and things like that, plus uh, Kerberos, which is from MIT Kerberos, so you get a really nice secure uh, password tunnel. There's also the ability to join it to Active Directory in a, uh, in a trust relationship. So you've got two domains talking with each other. You can authenticate to your Red Hat Identity Management clients with Active Directory, Active Directory credentials, so it's like a pass-through. Um, also, single sign-on works. So when you log into your Windows machines that are joined to Active Directory domains, you get a Kerberos ticket. If the Active Directory domain has a trust relationship with identity management, you can SSH to an IPA client or identity management client as long as you have access to that machine and it won't ask you for a password. It'll just use your open Kerberos ticket. Um, also, uh, identity management comes with fine-grained access control, host-based access control, which means you can get very specific with what machines you want your users or groups of users to access. Um, there's also one-time password support, so uh, you can use apps on your phone like uh, FreeOTP or Google Authenticator. Um, identity management will generate QR codes for your users, and if you enable a uh, one-time password on specific users, it will ask them for their PIN and token codes separately whenever they authenticate to an IPA client. Um, there's also certificate management, public key infrastructure. So when you, uh, when you first deploy identity management, if you don't specify a certificate for it to use, it will generate its own certificate. It is a certificate authority, and uh, you can generate certificates for users specifically, for hosts also. Uh, you can also generate certificates for other services and it will manage those certificates and renew those certificates when they come up for, uh, for renewal. Uh, so what I was kind of touching on in the first part of that last slide was central authentication. Uh, like I said, uh, it comes with LDAP and Kerberos. LDAP is the 389DS backend, which is a very lightweight, very slim, very quick and easy to configure uh, LDAP uh, structure. And then MIT uh, Kerberos for your uh, Kerberos server and your uh, k-admin access if you want to get really fine-grained with your principal management. So this slide basically shows you how to set up an Active Directory trust in a default install of Active Directory, not one that's been uh, heavily modified with GPOs because I can't really, uh, I can't really predict what GPOs, custom GPOs are going to do. But in a default install of Active Directory, all you have to do on IPA or identity management is open a Kerberos ticket as the administrator user of IPA, uh, run the IPA-adtrust-install command, which basically sets up Samba and prepares, uh, it prepares Samba and WinBind and and uh, a couple of other configuration files needed for a trust relationship. And then you just run the uh, IPA trust-add command with type ad and then your ad domain name. Uh, dash dash admin, you can actually specify a specific user that you want this command to ask you the password for. And this is the user, the administrator user in this command is the user that exists in Active Directory. It's the one who has permission to generate principles and, and join hosts to Active Directory. So you can change this from administrator. Most, most people disable the administrator uh, account whenever they deploy Active Directory. If you have a different user that's a part of the domain admins group, you can specify that user there. Hit enter, it asks you for a password, and it does everything, and that's it. Once the trust is created, I want to show you a little demo real quick. If I can find my terminal. 
That is way too small. Can everybody see that? Okay. So right now I am logged in as root on my Red Hat uh, 8 identity management server. I have an open ticket for the administrator user of this server. That's kind of, is it too big? Can everybody in the back see that? Can you still see it? Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, destroy any open Kerberos tickets that were in this. So I don't have any active Kerberos tickets stored in cache right now. Um, whenever you deploy IPA as a server or as a client, uh, there will be a service that is configured called SSSD. And SSSD is basically the client that uh, translates uh, LDAP to the, uh, to the service that's requesting user information, whether it be the front-end terminal. If I run the ID command, uh, it contacts SSSD. SSSD looks for the first domain that it's joined to, and it pulls back the admin user from identity management. Uh, right now, I actually have a trust set up with Active Directory. So if I do ID administrator, because I haven't disabled the administrator user, administrator at win.terranforge.vert is what I named my Windows domain. I spelled it wrong. I put an E in there. It's not supposed to be. So I get user information back as the uh, for the administrator user that exists in Active Directory. And as you can see, it's actually resolving group numbers and the UID from the object SID and object GUID attributes that are, uh, that are stored on that user in Active Directory's version of LDAP. Those, uh, those specific attributes, if you've ever looked at those attributes, they're, they're actually really long string of numbers. What SSSD does to to kind of bring those numbers down to a more easily to handle a set of numbers is it runs it through an algorithm that never changes. So whenever you update your system and SSSD gets updated, these numbers will never never change. So uh, basically, uh, SSSD by default just understands how to how to uh, how to translate Active Directory uh, object SID and object GUID. We also can SSH as the administrator user. From the Windows domain to the local host, and I hope I typed that right. It looks like I did. I did not type the username right. Looks like I typed it right. I might be mistyping the password. Okay. So I figured out what the password was. I can SSH, I can basically, I, what I just did was authenticated to the IPA server, Red Hat uh, Identity Management Server, as an Active Directory user. Because I don't currently have any restrictions set up to restrict specific users. So by default, all users basically have access to all the systems, and I can show you uh, why that is. I want to give you a little overview of what the interface for for this looks like. So identity management comes with a web interface. So if you're not comfortable with, uh, with commands, specifically IPA commands, you can just access the interface and do pretty much uh, all the same thing. In here we have host base access control, which I was talking about. There is a rule called allow all. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Okay, can you see that in the back? So by default, there is a rule called allow all that allows all users to access any host 
from any host. So any IPA system, any IPA client joined to this uh, identity management server, any user from identity management or from Active Directory can access that host. Um, so the first thing you want to do before deleting this rule is actually create a rule where users have specific access to specific servers because as soon as you delete this rule, nobody's going to be able to access anything. So another thing that I wanted to show you here is uh, I mentioned certificate management. In the web interface, you can see all of the certificates that IPA has generated, and currently it is only generated certificates for itself. So you'll see the host name of the, m of the IPA server listed in, in here as a CN of the certificate. Or, uh, it'll have a certificate of itself with the CN of the host name. Um, also, there is the o OTP tokens tab, which easily allows you to uh, uh, generate OTP tokens for users. And users can actually do this themselves. Yeah? So, so the, uh, the question that was asked was, uh, has the workflow improved from CentOS 7? as far as OTP goes uh, into uh, RHEL 8. There's been a lot of uh, bug fixes around that. Um, as far as I know, there was never really anything wrong. Okay. Um, if, if I would have thought about it, I would have I would have set up a user with uh, free OTP on my phone just to kind of show it off, but I haven't run into any problems with uh, with our internal environments in our testing. Okay. So uh, relate identity management OTP to me it it seems to be perfect. I, I haven't run into any issues with it. We haven't had any we haven't had anybody actually come to us with issues. Okay. So. Um, what I was going to uh, was was what I was going to point out is that if you configure a user for OTP, they can log into the web interface and actually generate an OTP token for themselves, as long as they authenticate with their password. Um, there is a couple of other things that you can do in here, like manage. Uh, manage specific principal names for services that you need to connect with uh, any identity management server, such as if you wanted to run a SIF server, or if you have another web service that needs a specific principal name, you can generate those in here. I was going to show something else, but I think I've just forgotten what it was that I was going to show. So on one of my slides, I believe that I failed to mention DNS management. Uh, Identity management, or IPA, actually comes with uh, name D installed. It's kind of, kind of one of the things that it pulls in along with everything else. And you can have IPA manage uh, DNS for your entire network network if you wanted to. Uh, but if you install it with, with DNS support, it comes with its own zones and it will manage its own servers that you join with, uh, with identity management. So in this tab, if I were to set up another another replica, and I don't specify it, of course it's not going to show up. If I do specify it, you can manage uh, what DNS servers you have attached here. Uh, we Professionally, we, we suggest having in a production environment uh, at least four identity management servers, all with uh, certificate authority and DNS management replicating between all of them. Um, The the reason to have that is mainly because of uh, 
any type of retention. If, if one of your servers happens to blow up or go offline, you've got three other servers there backing up. If you have one server with your certificate authority management stuff installed on it and you have other replicas that don't, if that server goes down, you're, you're basically looking at an entire uh, redeployment. So I'm trying to think of the specific term I wanted to say, but I can't. <laughs> What's that? Redundancy. That's the word. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Redundancy. IPA's main focus is redundancy. Um, in here, you can see the DNS zones that you have uh, that you have IPA managing by default. Like I said, it manages its own DNS zone if you install it with DNS support. Um, all the service records are, are uh, SRV records are in here. Your Kerberos pointers, your LDAP pointers, K password pointers. Um, I don't think there's anything else in here that I was wanting to show off at the moment. Like I said, this is going to be a uh, high-level overview. Yeah. So the question is, uh, what does what does IPA prefer to manage as far as DNS goes, or or does it prefer Active Directory over over itself? And the uh, the answer I think you might be looking for is it's is completely flexible. Um, you so one thing to make note of is you cannot install Identity Management or IPA on the same DNS realm as Active Directory because of these, if I can get back to it real quick. So this DNS zone that we have here, you see that there is a, uh, there are Kerberos SRV records. In a DNS zone for Active Directory, these records also exist. So if you were to install IPA or identity management on the same DNS zone, you would have two Kerberos SRV records on the same DNS zone that your Windows clients and your IPA clients will be looking at. So if you were to try to authenticate to one, it might hit an Active Directory Kerberos server when it's actually trying to use an IPA user as credentials. Um, we don't support them being on the same DNS domain. If you install them side by side, make sure that they are on their own subdomain. So ipa.example.com and Active Directory could be on example.com just as kind of a root thing. But it doesn't matter really to IPA who manages DNS. You can set up forwarding and it'll be just as happy as if you were to let Active Directory manage everything itself. Uh, it's, it's really just uh, your preference, I guess. Does that answer, does that answer your question? Yeah, I understand that there's, no downside. There's, there's no downside. Um. Pretty much, that's that's the only gotcha is is the same DNS uh, realm. Avoid that at all costs. Don't don't put them on the same realm. Yeah. Yeah. Dynamic DNS is supported, and uh, that's actually a feature that's built into SSSD. So it's 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 already on all of all of your clients. <laughs> yeah. Um, it really depends on your distribution. Uh, yeah. So, so the question is, um, what's the process for joining hosts that are not, or that don't have an IPA uh, client package available or SSSD available? Um, you can use. Most distributions come with uh, Open LDAP clients or LDAP.com, where you can configure it. Uh, to point to an LDAP server, IPA or, or identity management fully supports that. Um, if, you, if you have a, a Kerberos client that you can do alongside that, that's even better. But you, you, it's not restricted to uh, your, your distribution having an IPA client package or the SSSD package. You can, you can use uh, the native LDAP client stuff. 
So, so it really depends on just how your distribution configures its LDAP client. Okay. Um, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know about that. We have a lot of people that use K admin to grab, uh, principles like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show in the GUI. Did anybody have any questions about what I've gone over so far? Anybody else? Okay. Sorry. Uh, what do you mean rotation? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can, if you, when you generate a certificate, you can set manual, uh, manual expiration on it, and uh, uh, Certmonger will will automatically try to renew it if there's if there's no lingering issues. Sometimes. You know, thing things always happen. We've yeah, we've run into certificate issues where we've had multiple certs expire, and we couldn't set the time back, restart the services, and renew all of them at the same time. We actually had to take it cert by cert and go through the process. And it, it like I said, it really really depends on the situation, uh, what type of problem you might run into. Um, just centralized management. So, so the question is, um, what's different between IPA managing uh, host space access control and just doing it on the local machine? Yeah. So, um, it it also depends on the client that's running on the machine because if you have like SSSD running on it, the first thing it's going to do is look at the HPAC rules. Um, but you can further you can further limit that by editing sshd underscore configure or whatever uh, ssh uh, server you might use. But the difference is is that you have a central place where you can manage everything. You can manage uh, host space access control to all of your hosts instead of having to ssh to each machine or set up Ansible rules to do that for you. Ansible playbooks. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, adding what support? So it, you're talking about, um, can identity management use that module to contact Let's Encrypt to renew the certificate? To I have not heard of that before. So, so the que the question is, um, there's a module in the community that uh, that allows Certmonger to contact uh, Let's Encrypt to renew Let's Encrypt certificates. Um, and you're wanting to know if that functionality has been implemented in in identity management or, or if there pl are plans to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every everything pretty much started in the community, um, but I have not heard of uh, I've not heard of that being added to identity management. And that's actually the first I've heard of that module being. <laughs> being in existence. So um, uh, that's something I'd, I'd probably check into uh, myself later on. Um, 
I could probably uh, send an email out and ask a few people if you just want to maybe come by the uh, the Wine HQ table. That's where I'll be sitting. Maybe ask me tomorrow. See if I get a response. Um, any other questions? Cool. So, yeah. So um, the question is, what's what's the best way to migrate Active Directory users off of Active Directory and into identity management? Uh, it, it I don't think it's going to be an answer that you want uh, because you're looking at doing it kind of slowly, one by one. Is that is that right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe there's a way to migrate the GPOs from Active Directory. I think you'll have to rebuild those. But, uh, but there are tools to migrate Active Directory users into uh, identity management. But in the process, they'll they'll also have to reset their passwords because Kerberos, Kerberos can't be migrated, and Active Directory uses that as its password management. Does that does that answer your question? Um, the best place to look for things like that is uh, is is basically Red Hat documentation. We have uh, uh, Red Hat Identity or Red Hat Enterprise Linux eight or seven. Um, either of those are are pretty up to date. Just look for the manuals and go down to Identity Management, and migrate options are are all listed there. And we we kind of we don't go into too much technical detail. Because every environment is is different, but we give uh, we give a good idea about uh, the best ways to do that. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. So I think there's one question that everybody might be asking. And if I can display it on the screen, I kind of. How do I get a hold of the product, right? Anybody? How much does it cost? Much does it cost? Yeah, that's a good one. Nobody's asking. I was asking myself that question when I. Not really. That guy's asking the question. <laughs> so um, there's a couple of ways that you can get a hold of uh, of identity management from Red Hat. Uh, you can. Uh, the first place you want to go to is access.redhat.com. And you can create an account for free on, on Red Hat's website. Uh, you can start a Red Hat evaluation, which gives you 30 days. And sometimes uh, customer service is a little lenient on extending that if you're testing for a production environment. Um, Red Hat Identity Management comes available with any entitlement that you get for uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So whether it's a self-support, uh, whether it's an evaluation, uh, standard or premium support um, and there's also the upstream project which you can uh, take a look at which is called free IPA and the main place to get that would either be on uh, Fedora or CentOS. CentOS is more closely related to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux so if you want to get kind of a side-by-side -side comparison or a mirror view that would be the best uh, OS to go with but um if you go with Fedora and go to Free IPA, it comes with the latest, uh, the latest code. Things we haven't really, some things we might not have implemented into identity management yet. Yeah. Um, we're we're using uh, Keycloak at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm not the best resource for, for key cloak discussions. <laughs> Actually, if you create an account access at redhat.com, you can start a discussion, and Red Hat employees will respond to it. But it, everybody else will be able to see it too. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that. So if you have an. Oh. Well, you. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had uh, Amazon or uh, what was it, Azure? Yeah. You can you can rent the product, but um, if you want it for free uh, for thirty days, <laughs> you started start an evaluation. Um. That's pretty much the conclusion. It didn't take a full hour because this is mostly just a high level, uh, not really too deep of a technical talk. Um, if you have any questions for me about identity management, you can drop by the uh, YNHQ table. Um, like I said, these are the different ways that you can contact me. I don't know if I can actually zoom in on that page right there. I can't. I would have made the text larger if I would have known it was a projector. But... um. Thank you for coming. If anybody else has any uh, questions right now, feel free to raise your hand. We've still got the session being recorded for the next 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Well, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Uh, the question is, are there plans to incorporate uh, snapshotting into the file systems that we currently support? And I don't, I don't know. I'm not a file systems guy. Yeah. So. So um, they can't hear you in the mic, so I'm just repeating. That's why I've been repeating questions. Um, thin LVM has uh, snapshot capabilities. So that might answer it. Yeah, free IPA auto maps. Uh, yeah, Kerberos, Kerberized NFS. Yeah, it's it's encrypted. Kerberized Kerberos. I don't think anybody's ever cracked Kerberos tunnels. Any other questions? <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> no. Okay, two questions. Um, I think most most bigger companies, they've got multiple places where a user account needs to be created, like payroll, um, uh, workstation authentication, user, things like that. Uh, I think most most places use a playbook to do that. So th they'll actually enter like uh, user information, first name, last name, date of birth, whatever, into a prompt, and something on the back end does everything for them. Um, for s for smaller companies, 
I think they do it manually. I haven't, I, I have never been a part of a co an employee of a company that uses IPA as something that I can help manage. Um, I did work with uh, Red Hat as a contractor for a little while, and I did manage a little bit of the LDAP structure, but I was never involved with user generation. Um, so I don't, I can't give you a straight answer, but if I was a bigger company, I would use an automated service to do all that. Yeah. Uh, there is hard hardware token support. Um, I yeah, I've not heard of of anything about that. Any any other support than OTP? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can give an accurate answer on that uh, because I don't I don't work with development directly. Only when I have serious issues that I'm I'm having trouble solving. But um, as far as I know, we have a lot of focus right now on stability, and and uh, not as much focus on features because we have a lot of features in identity management right now. We don't have all the features, but there's there's a ton of them there. So we've got a lot of focus uh, recently with stability instead of instead of more stuff. If that makes uh, if that makes sense. I I don't know if I can actually give you a straight answer. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do have people working on Ansible playbooks for deploying uh, IPA and and different types of uh, of services, but uh, I haven't heard anything being officially supported. If if that's the answer you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? What's my favorite ice cream? Chocolate. But I've sworn off chocolate, so it's kind of a... That makes me sad. I shouldn't have said anything. Any other questions about identity management? Or uh, dogs? I don't know a lot about dogs. I know a lot about cats. Where do I work as far as a Red Hat employee? I work from home because of um, because of family, just family things. But uh, if I were to be asked to come into the office, I'm about 40 minutes away from uh, corporate, which is uh, downtown Raleigh. And I always have a place whenever I go, whether it's on the floor or on the roof. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah, they just changed the roof. Yeah, it's still a cereal box. So I like it, but um, Shadow Man's gone. It's just a hat now. <laughs> no. No. We're not having, <laughs> we're not asking those types of questions. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that for the camera either. <laughs> That's a funny question. Anything else? Um, I don't know if I can give an accurate answer on that. We.
Yeah, we we've got we have uh, a lot of we have a lot of ties with Microsoft as far as uh, customer support, and we're doing a lot of things with uh, with Azure and identity management kind of kind of coming together. So, um, but as far as like how how deep that goes, I, I have no idea. Uh, no, we're not. No, Red Red Hat is not turning into Microsoft. No. Um, I was actually told by somebody uh, that Microsoft's new PowerShell kind of looks like Bash. Not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. PowerShell commands are really long because of VMS. I'm trying to summarize it for the for the audience at YouTube or uh But he also writes a lot of the stuff for engineers. Okay. Makes sense. So we're uh, definitely slowly taking a left turn off topic, but I don't care if it goes in a circle. If anybody wants to ask any other questions, <laughs> you're f you're free to leave the room. But we have six more minutes of uh, randomness. Well, you've got a lot of distros, you know, down the hall right here. Yeah, feel free to stop at any of them, except for Fedora, apparently. Um, so, uh, no, they're not. I am here on my own accord. <laughs> um, the WineHQ table, if anybody knows what WineHQ is, I'm pretty sure most everybody does. Uh, Wine is a project that allows you to run Windows applications on Linux machines. Um, it's a trans is a translation layer. It is not an emulator. It's not an emulator. Wine is not a, actually. That's what it stands for. W i n e. Wine is not an emulator. But anyway, we play a lot of games, and we like Linux, uh, so we want to run our games on Linux, and we use uh, Wine to do that. Specifically, uh, Proton from Steam. I don't. That's kind of like. That's the no, no, I know what DOSBox is. No, no, I mean Lotus, Lotus. Oh, Lotus. Oh. Lotus One Two Three was what Microsoft copied off of the Microsoft Flex. Okay. Microsoft Access. 
I have no idea if that would run or not, but what I would do is uh, maybe get with any of the distros and see if they, is it free, is it? Okay, so they might be willing to, to test it if they've got wine installed. Any other questions? The room is slowly emptying out. But some of you remain because there are questions on your mind that you are not saying. No, I'm I'm actually a Fedora ambassador. I still am. Um, I've been a Fedora ambassador for about seven years. Um, I've been a Red Hat employee for... Let me rephrase that. I've worked under the Red Hat roof for about seven and a half years. Uh, two and a half of that was as a contractor supporting Red Hat's employees directly. And that's when I got a little taste of uh, Red Hat's LDAP structure. Um, two and a half years after I started as a contractor, I uh, transitioned over into what's called Global Support Services. And now I provide support to Red Hat's customers and I'm way more involved with, with LDAP and, and all of that good stuff. I thought I saw a hand go up slightly. It's like a half swing of a bat. Umpire still calls a strike. People get mad. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know if everybody can see it, but it is striker at terranforge.com. S T R I K E R at T E R R A N F O R G E.com. Any other questions? This will continue to record on its own, it will not stop. Um, if you're interested in the recording stuff that's going on, go straight down the hall until you cannot go any further. Don't turn. Just go straight and talk to Noah. Well, Noah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he runs a radio show. It's called Ask Noah. And he basically set up all of the, all of the uh, video and audio recording. Actually, what you hear from me is not going from me to that speaker is actually going to his desk and then coming back and going to the speaker. Yeah. He's a smart dude. I don't even, yeah, there's, I wouldn't try to even guess what's going on inside of that trunk. There's so much hardware, <laughs> so many little pieces to break. Anything else? guys just relaxing in the AC? I'm not. I got up here and I was freezing cold. I was practicing and I was stuttering. I had to run upstairs to get another shirt. I wore the microphone upstairs. Housekeeping was looking at me like I was crazy. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's possible for me to convince anybody in, in less than one minute. You can see the code in Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora and pretty much all Linux distros. Open source is, how would I put this, a microscope, gives you a microscope into what's going on in your system. I thought the recording would stop on that statement that I said, but it's still going. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they <laughs> pretty sure they already know. Microsoft knows they are closed source. Well, there's still a green light. Anybody have any questions still? No. I I went to college. Um I do not have uh, a degree of any kind. Uh, I started on Linux when he introduced me to it. That's that's my father right there. Uh, I was about 12 years old, and or I was, I can't remember. I was younger, or I was 12. 
I tell most people that I was 12. And uh, what was the dish row that we were on? Because I know the, the desktop environment was Enlightenment. It was Fedora? Okay. I started on Fedora when I was 12. And I was selling Red Hat boxes, actually. Red Hat CD boxes. Which was crazy. No. <laughs> No, uh, Debian. Debian is a is a is a Debian distro. Fedora is an RPM distro. Fedora is in the Red Hat family. Um, it's it's basically the upstream version of Red Hat. It includes it's kind of a rolling distro. It has a lot of features that have not made its way into uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, some of them may never make its way into Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but uh, it's it's part of the Red Hat family, just like CentOS. Uh, yeah, yes. There's, there's a graph that exists on the internet that shows you all of the forks and the distros that have died and the ones that are still alive and what they were born from. And uh, if you, it's really easy to find. If you look it up, just look for a Linux distro graph. It'll be like the first or second thing that pops up. Anything interesting in the uh, scheduling that I could mention while the green light is still going? What time is this supposed to end? 3.45, okay, so we have seven more minutes. <laughs> that is correct. Um, you can get uh, identity management or IPA. It's, it's called IPA. Yeah. Um, it's actually w what it's called. When you, when you go to install it, um free IPA developer most of the free IPA developers I believe are paid by Red Hat. If there was a shift in package naming, it would probably be a big deal, but I'm sure that if there was enough push for it it would go through. But uh when you uh yeah, any any type of Red Hat Enterprise Linux entitlement uh IPA server comes with it, Red Hat Identity Management. And it's uh it's completely simple to install. Uh in in RHEL 8 DNF install IPA dash server, You're <laughs> and it's installed. Um, there's a couple of other things that you will want to install if you want to do DNS management, if you want to have integrated DNS, um, if you want to have uh, integrated certificate management, um, and the ability to set up an Active Directory trust. There's three. Uh, Actually, you don't have to install the additional packages for DNS or certificate management. You have to specify that during the server configuration. But for Active Directory Trust, there is a specific package you have to install. But yeah, in um, rel, rel evaluation, rel self-support, rel developer subscription, standard subscription, premium subscription, they all give you access to an uh, identity management server. You just won't get support for some of those. Um, as far as DNS goes, or as far as users? So, so you can go one way, but not the other. You can authenticate to IPA clients, identity management clients, with Active Directory credentials. You cannot authenticate to Windows machines that are on an, the AD domain that has a trust with Linux credentials that are on the identity management server. So it, it, it goes one way. 
Um, it, yeah, he was t he was talking about moving his users. Right. I didn't actually catch that. Yeah, that that's probably something I should have thought of asking. <laughs> I didn't think of it at the time. Do you have a question? Um, there are, I have seen people do that. So th the question is, uh, have I seen people separate which server they can log into for the GUI to manage users, and do they block the GUI on other servers? I have seen people do that. I have seen people set up a specific group or a specific server to where they only have web access but the port, so the thing about that is, is you can't block the ports besides web. You have to filter them because that server that you want to only use for web management still needs to be able to replicate to and from the other servers. So you have to actually filter th those ports for the specific IP addresses of your other IPA servers. Oh, y yeah, no. I, I see what you're saying. You're, you're talking about separating the Apache uh, part of IPA and only using it on one server without LDAP and Kerberos and that stuff being installed. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do that. It would be incredibly difficult because Apache looks at the server that it's running on to gather information from. Um, so if you were to rip everything out except for Apache, it wouldn't function. You'd have to go in and, and change a whole bunch of other stuff, and we don't support uh, doing things like that. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Uh, we don't support it. <laughs> it would be a lot of pain, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Now, something else I have seen people do is they they will have one server that has port 80, port 443 open, but only from a specific client. So you have to be on that client to access the web GUI of IPA. I've seen people do that. But um, as far as ripping, uh, ripping out parts of IPA that you don't want on the server, uh, I would advise not to do that. You can you can play around with it all you want, uh, but if if you try to get support for it, it's not. <laughs> I've never seen I've never seen somebody do that. I think we have less than a minute. But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for coming and everybody who's watching at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Again, my name is Stryker, and this was uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I did.